Hey everybody, this is Mandy from Chapel Forge. So we have been making goat milk soap for, oh, I don't know, maybe six or eight months. Um, and it has been explosive. I just can't even, with the support we are getting with goat milk soap, it's been amazing. Um, making it has been awesome. Time consuming, of course, because I pretty much do everything from scratch. I don't use any synthetic oils or anything like that. Um, but it's been an awesome learning process. I'm loving coming up with new scents. Of course, that's the most fun part, making scents that are special requests. So when I started making goat milk soap, basically we acquired goats because Zad had a heart attack. I was researching goat milk, how great it is for you and all of that. Um, and so we got a goat. We got rid of that goat because she just really wasn't a good fit for our homestead. My hair is just wild today. Just was not a good fit for our homestead. So we got another goat and she was in, uh, was pregnant when we got her and then had babies a few months later. So she was in milk. Uh, you know, I had a great experience with her on the milking stand. She was already kind of trained to it because this was her seventh kidding. Um, she came from a great home. I'm still friends with the lady that I got her, you know, got her from or whatever. So that was fantastic. So I started making the goat milk soap after the babies were weaned and all of that, and I could start freezing milk. Um, and I definitely knew from the beginning that I did not want to put synthetic oil in. I didn't want to use fake colorings. I didn't want to do any of that kind of stuff. I was in a car accident like, oh my gosh, 10 years ago and slammed my head off the car window and had a concussion and whatever. And ever since then, strong scents just are not for me. I can't handle it. Um, I get a headache and whatever. And so I'm just not into it. So I knew that I wanted to make soap with basically food, plants and whatever. So I have pretty much been making my soap with essential oils, dried fruits, freeze dried fruits, um, powders, things like that. Um, and it's been great. And I've had a really good response. I was a little bit nervous when I started making the soap because I thought, you know, everybody kind of has Bath and Body Works in their head, um, but that really, I haven't had anybody say, oh, I got this and it just doesn't have enough smell or whatever. It seems like there's definitely a customer base out there for people that want, shh, for people that want soap that doesn't have a bunch of crap in it. I've had a bunch of customers that have eczema or acne or things like that, um, and they tell me that it's, I don't want to say cured, but that it's gone. They don't have issues with that. They don't have dry skin issues anymore. Um, and that's been fantastic. And part of the reason for that is one, the goat milk. Two, I render down my own tallow. Um, so I get beef suet from local butchers and then I render that down. And there's a lot of great benefits in the tallow. It's super nurturing, gosh, super nurturing to your skin as well as the goat milk. And then the things that I add into it, you know, oranges, mangoes, pomegranates, blueberries, um, you know, obviously the different essential oils. So like peppermint, um, spearmint, patchouli, whatever, whatever I'm making for people. Um, those all have their own specific benefits too. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about what I'm doing tonight to prepare to make soap. I have a lot of soap on order. I think I have probably 15 loaves curing in the basement right now that I made last week. Um, while me and Bud and Zad and our apprentice Matt, and it was this whole big group effort. Um, so I just wanna show you a little bit of the process of what I do to prepare to make soap. All right, so in the winter time, this little area out here, which is basically kind of like the vestibule, I don't know what you call it, the little entryway to go to the basement um, is cold. So it's great because I sort of have extra fridge space. So I have about 50 pounds of beef suet or beef fat here that I'll render down this week. Um, well, this weekend, I guess it's when, is it Thursday? It's Wednesday. Um, so I'll render that down because I am getting super low. On All right, so I was getting a little nervous because I was running low on tallow. Um, I have a local butcher that's been fantastic with helping me out getting beef fat. Um, but I'm selling so much soap. I'm not complaining. I'm selling so much soap that I almost needed to have a few butchers in my back pocket to get this from. So we hooked up with two more today. Super, super nice local butchers, family butcher shops. They were fantastic. I'm happy to support them. They're happy to support me in making soap. Um, and it's just, been really awesome to form those relationships. Um, so I will be working on that this week. The process to render down tallow is almost identical to rendering down lard, which I have a video on and I'll link that in the description so you can see that process. Um, obviously you can use it for cooking fat. You don't have to just use it for soap, of course. Um, so I will link that in the description so you can see that.
The other thing that I have to do to prepare to make soap before I do anything else, like obviously I have to get the lye and the other oils and, you know, get all that stuff prepared. But when I'm not using synthetic scents and synthetic colors and whatever, I have to prepare the food. So I got a great deal on some blueberries, clementines, mangoes, pomegranates this week. Um, there's a great little store up where my friend Missy at Homesteading Roots lives and they always have awesome deals on different products. Now, obviously... We are out of season. You know, it's not like um, really anything's in season right now. I mean, it's the middle of January. So um, if I don't have enough put up, and this is where I have to find a balance, you know, I've broken into some of our freeze dried stuff that was really supposed to be food for us um, to make soap, which is fine. I have plenty put away. I'm not super worried about it. But when I find great deals on this stuff, it's perfect for making soap. So tonight, I'm going to take these blueberries and these clementine peels the kids are working on um, this bag of clementines will be gone probably by tomorrow um anytime we have citrus in the house i always make sure that i have a bowl out everybody can throw their citrus peels in so that i can get those into the dehydrator um i have the kosori dehydrator it's 150 bucks i have a video on that also if you're just getting into dehydrating it is a fantastic choice it's super inexpensive it's quiet it has a digital readout like it, i have no complaints it's some of the best $150 I've ever spent. So I'm gonna work on getting the blueberries into the dehydrator. And then these are, I don't really wanna put the pomegranates and the mangoes in the dehydrator. I'd really rather put those in the freeze dryer. They're obviously a lot juicier. They're gonna take a little bit longer. I'm really not, as you freeze dry and dehydrate more, you sort of get a feel for like what, well, depending on what end result you want and what kind of does better in which appliance. Um, for these, I really don't want like a fruit leather, which is kind of what I'm going to get if I put these mangoes or these pomegranates into the dehydrator. The pomegranates would get a little bit less leathery, but the mango will definitely become like a, a leather or like a, like a fruit chew thing. And that's not what I'm going for. You know, I want these to stay super dry. I'm going to store them in my soap shop. So I need there to not be, you know, I need as little moisture as possible so that- All right, so if you know me at all, you know that I'm all about no waste and we just try not to waste anything ever around here. Um, so there are some blueberries. Obviously I said these were a really great deal. So I literally got these containers for 50 cents. For blueberries, that's crazy. That's so cheap. That's way cheaper than flash food. Um, so obviously there's some moldy ones in here. They're gonna go to the chickens. I'm sure somebody's gonna come at me about feeding moldy food to your chickens. Your chickens are not going to eat anything that they don't wanna eat, so give them all your scraps. If they don't want it, it will compost into the ground, and I promise it's gonna be okay. Um, the other thing, when you're cutting mangoes, if you've ever cut mangoes, you know how annoying this big seed in the middle is, seed, pit, whatever it is. Um, you try to get off as much as you can. The chickens will love picking what I can't get off of this, and they will have a delicious snack. So that is also going in my chicken bin. Here's my chicken bin. I've showed it a few times. Everyone always asks me where I got it. Um, so I will link that below as well. This thing is the bomb. Um, it's got a lid somewhere that I always lose. So it's got this lid that has a charcoal filter in it. Honestly, we don't use the charcoal filter. You don't really need it. Um, unless you don't take it out very often, but ours is filled at least once a day typically um depending on what how much preservation and whatever is happening so i will link this below this is the best it's got this nice handle um we've had a few over the years we had a ceramic one which is great until you have toddlers and then it breaks um or adults we break these things too so this metal one is great it's practically indestructible um i've had times where it got kind of crusty inside and i literally leave it lay in the chicken coop for the afternoon and they pick it clean for me obviously i wash it when it comes in but my point is it's very very sturdy and you're probably not going to break it um so i'll link that you can check that out i highly recommend it for all of my chicken owning friends so any of the things that are moldy the mango pits, whatever, that's all gonna go in here. And then we're just gonna get these um, dehydrator trays filled and freeze. All right, so I wanted to show these quick because if you have a freeze dryer or you're thinking about getting a freeze dryer, these things are life-changing. So these reusable parchments, which obviously I will link in the description, they come on a roll, I cut them to size. Um, I don't remember how many, I think I had to buy, hmm, 
two rolls to fill my eight trays. I can't remember though, but I'll put it in the description. And even if you just need them for baking, if you don't have a freeze dryer, these are fantastic. So literally nothing sticks to these. If you've ever freeze dried something like strawberries, they're so freaking sticky. You're sitting there with like a spatula like this, a sharp spatula trying to get all the crap off and it's, it's like a rock. Um, and it's so annoying, especially in like heavy preservation season when you just need to like keep rolling and you don't have time for this kind of crap. No one, I, I don't have time for that. So these parchment papers are amazing. I definitely put them down for the mangoes and the pomegranates cause they're like wet and ooey and whatever. So I don't want to be dealing with that when they come out. So I have all of my blueberries. I have my orange peels working on selling my chicken bin. Going to finish up these pomegranates and mangoes and then we're going to get- All right, so I got all of these on their trays. So I have pomegranates, mangoes, blueberries, and some orange peels. So you'll notice that all my pomegranates, I literally just cut them. I didn't cut out the arrows. I didn't take the skin off. Same with the mangoes. Obviously I didn't put this big seed on there, but the peels are still on. So the beauty of making soap with fruit is that I don't have to take that stuff out because there are benefits to your skin in pomegranate peels, in the arrows, in the white fleshy part. Um, there's benefits for your skin in mango peels as well as the mango. Um, so that's probably one of my other favorite things about making goat milk soap the way that I do is that a lot of that stuff that is waste in most households goes into my soap and literally whatever I definitely cannot use in soap or doesn't have benefits to your skin goes to my chickens and then feeds us in eggs when they're not being freeloaders. So if you're looking for an option for soap, um, if you have like eczema, acne, psoriasis, any of that kind of stuff, and you're just looking for a soap that doesn't have a bunch of junk in it, that um, I'm not saying it's gonna cure it, obviously, I'm not saying that, but it could help with keeping your skin not be so dry, um, with breakouts and things like that, flare-ups or whatever. So check us out at chapelwithforge.com. If you go to products at the top and go to From Our Homestead, you'll see all the soap scents that I offer. Obviously I have unscented. That's the one that a lot of people start with if they're fighting some kind of uh, disease or ailment or whatever. Um, but a lot of people that thought they could only ever use unscented have been able to use my scented soap because it doesn't have the crap in it. Um, so go to chapelforge.com, check that out. Obviously we love your support. Um, it's just been an amazing journey so far with soap. I hope this gave you a little bit of insight as to why and how I do this process. Obviously I know it's a lot more work. You know, there's people out there doing melt and pour, people just using like palm oil and that's fine. And there's, you know, different strokes for different folks as they say. Um, but I put a lot of time and effort into literally every single step to, to rendering down the tallow, freeze drying, dehydrating, air drying, whatever I'm doing um, for the herbs, the fruits, whatever. Um, and then obviously the goat milk. I mean, you know, I'm caring for goats and milking goats and breeding goats and all that other stuff. Um, so there's a lot of work that goes into this, but I love it. It's so pretty when it's done. I should show you a piece before we go. Um, so let's see, this is my eucalyptus mint soap. It's so pretty, I love all the ridges. Typically I put something in it. So like this one has eucalyptus oil, eucalyptus leaves, peppermint oil and mint leaves. Obviously the mint I grew here. Um, and then, so that gives it a, an exfoliant and then you get the benefits of on your skin from the mint and the eucalyptus. So. I love doing soaps. A lot of them give them cool colors. Um, sometimes I'll add different clays in to get a brighter color, but like the blueberry gave the blueberry lemonade soap, which was surprisingly popular, um, a great blue hue. Obviously you're not gonna get like this blue right here, you know, some kind of manufactured blue, but it's beautiful and it's natural and it doesn't have anything in it that's bad for you. So. I hope you learned something. I hope you're encouraged to support your local businesses, support your local farmers. If you have any questions, as always, let me know and have a great day.